For the following problem, we're going to solve the equation and then we're going to find the product of the solutions that we get. So again, this is going to imply that we're going to get more than one solution. So when we're going to solve this problem, the answers that we're going to get, we're then going to multiply them in the end to get a final answer. Uh, so for this particular problem, we have x minus 3 raised to the fourth power minus 5 times x minus 3 raised to the second power plus 4 is equal to 0. Now we're trying to solve this equation for x, and there's a lot going on here. I said I have x minus 3 raised to the fourth power, so that means I have to do x minus 3 times x minus 3 times x minus 3 times x minus 3, which is a lot of multiplying. It's going to get me a lot of terms. And then to combine that with this calculation that we have going over here, it sounds like a lot of work and a big mess to try and deal with to have to solve. So to try and make this problem a little bit easier, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a u substitution for this problem to substitute something in to make it just a little bit easier for us to work with. And then at the end of the problem, I'll undo that substitution. So we'll see how this is going to go. Now, seeing each one of my terms here, I have x minus 3 raised to the fourth. I have x minus 3 raised to the second. So what we're essentially doing when we're doing the u substitution here is we want to look for something in common that we have with our terms, or essentially a uh, greatest uh, common factor uh, with our two terms. Because we see here we have x minus 3, x minus 3. We have that in common. One's raised to the fourth power, one's raised to the second power. And when it comes to finding the greatest common factor, we always go with the one raised to the lowest power, which in our situation is the 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that u is equal to x minus 3 squared. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to clean this problem up nice and pretty. So if u is equal to x minus 3 squared, this first substitution I have is x minus 3 to the fourth. Right? So x minus 3 to the fourth is essentially just two of these over here. I, if I have two of these things, x minus 3 squared, and then another x minus 3 squared, that's going to give me x minus 3 to the fourth. So I just need two of these things over here to turn it into this. So if u is going to equal to x minus 3 squared, that's going to allow us to plug into this term here. We need to figure out how we're going to plug into the x minus 3 to the fourth. Now, if I have something squared and then to the fourth, in my mind, my mind is telling me, well, hey, this just means it's two of these, right? So what I'm going to claim, I'm going to claim that u squared is the same thing as x minus 3 to the fourth. And let me show you how that's so. So if u is equal to x minus 3 squared, I'm going to take this u and I'm going to plug in x minus 3 squared. And then I have this squared here that I added in. All right, so u squared is just this right here, squared. And I'm claiming that this is equal to x minus 3 to the fourth. Well, here I have x minus 3 squared, then squared again. Remember that this is a power rule, and it says that if you have a power raised to a power, we multiply those exponents together. So 2 times 2 is equal to 4, giving me x minus 3 to the fourth. So that means these are indeed the same thing. x minus 3 to the fourth is the same thing as u squared, minus 5 times x minus 3 squared, which we said is u, and then plus 4 is equal to 0. That's how the u substitution works. We go with the lowest or the greatest common factor here, and then we use that to be able to plug in to our other term. As you can see here, u squared minus 5u plus 4 equals 0 looks much easier to try and solve than this bad boy up here. Okay, So let's continue with solving this. So seeing that this is a quadratic equation, my go-to when dealing with quadratic equations is to first see if we can factor. So if we're going to see if this can factor, take a look at our first term, u squared. That tells us u times u. Back over here, our last term is a 4. That means we're looking for factors of 4 that add or subtract to get 5. The only factors of 4 are 2 and 2 and 1 and 4. We want to use the 1 and 4. Looking at our signs, whatever sign your middle term has, that must go with the bigger number. 
Also, looking at this fact term, the only way to get a positive here in the N is if your factors both have the same sign. And since this one is already negative, that means the one also has to be negative. At this point here, we can use the zero factor uh, property that says that we can split each one of these factors up, set them both equal to zero, and solve these many equations. Solving the first equation, all we have to do is add 1 to both sides, giving us that u is equal to 1. Our second equation, we would then just add 4 to both sides, giving us that u is equal to 4. Now, we got u is equal to 1 and u is equal to 4. But we need to be careful here because we are not done with this problem. We need to solve this equation for x, not for u. Remember that we did this substitution here in the beginning? Well, once we solved and we got our u's, we need to then undo the, the uh, substitution. So how that's going to work is I'm going to take this one right over here, u is equal to 1, and I'm going to plug it into this u right here in the mini formula that I created. So I'm just going to plug in 1 is equal to x minus 3 squared. And I'm going to solve this for x. If I'm solving this for x, I need to get rid of this squared. The opposite of a square is a square root. And what you do to one side, you must do to the other side. So I need to take the square root of both sides. Square root of 1 is plus or minus 1 is equal to, well, square root and a square cancel, leaving me with x minus 3. To solve for x, all I have to do is add 3 on both sides giving me that I have 3 plus or minus 1 is equal to x. Because remember, anytime you take a square root, you have to consider the positive and the negative solution for it, which means this right here actually represents two answers. It represents 3 plus 1, which is 4, and then 3 minus 1, which is 2. So both of these are equal to x. Now we need to do this exact same thing, but with our other solution we got that u is equal to 4. So I'm going to plug it into this equation here. 4 is equal to x minus 3 squared. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to solve this one for x. So the first thing we need to do is undo this squared. So we're going to take the square root of both sides. The square root of 4 is plus or minus 2 is equal to square root cancels with square, leaving us with x minus 3. Add that 3 to both sides of the equation, giving us 3 plus or minus 2 is equal to x, which means our two solutions from that, 3 plus 2 is equal to 5, 3 minus 2 is equal to 1. Both of these are equal to x, or technically here we have four solutions, 4, 2, 5, and 1. So those are our four answers for this problem. Now, this problem tacked on an additional step right over here. It asked us to find the product of the solutions. So it wants us to take 4 times 2 times 5 times 1, and this would be our final answer for this problem. Now, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 5 is 40, and 40 times 1 is still 40. So for this particular problem, 40 is our grand final answer. Uh, here, though 4, 2, 1, and 5 are actually what x equals 2 and are the true solutions for this equation. Otherwise, that's it for this video.